I don't have to tell you about the situation on the ground in your city, uh, but in terms of how it looks to the rest of the country and the president uh, teeing it up as basically ineptitude, the ability, inability to control your own streets. Is that fair criticism? So I know it will shock you that the president is perhaps not giving an accurate or truthful picture. Um, we've got four blocks in Seattle that you just saw pictures of that is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an armed takeover. It's not a military junta. Um, we will we will make sure that we can restore this, but we have block parties and, and the like in this part of Seattle all the time. It's it's known for that. So I think the president, number one, there is no threat right now to the public. And we're looking, we're taking that very seriously. We're meeting with businesses and residents. But what the president threatened is illegal and unconstitutional. And the fact that he can think he can just tweet that and not have ramifications is just wrong. The counter will be block parties uh, don't take over a municipal building, let alone a police station, uh, and destroy it, um, basically thumbing their nose at any sense of civic control. Do you believe uh, that you have control of your city and that you would be able to clear those streets? Because you haven't. We do. And the chief of police was in that precinct today with her command staff looking and assessing on, on operational plans. But we saw that it was a point of conflict night after night between the police department and protesters. And we wanted to de-escalate that. And what we decided was the best way to do that was reopen the streets. And that itself ended up with some ramifications for the precinct to remove anything that was valuable from out of that building. But we will make sure that all of Seattle is safe. We're, we take public safety seriously. Um, but the description the president has given is not only wrong, but if it were right, his remedy is wrong. You don't dominate. Remember why we're here. You know, we're here because the nation saw Mr. Floyd murdered. And that lit a match across this country. And we have to acknowledge and know that we have a system that is built on systemic racism, and we have to dismantle that system piece by piece. We have to empower the black community and communities of color. And Move by the city council certainly got a lot of people's attention last night, and we're so happy to have you clarify this. So what are you trying to do? Are you hoping, by dismantling the Minneapolis Police Department, that you will be getting rid of the police department? You know, I think in Minneapolis, watching George Floyd's death um, and the, four the actions of the four police officers that were involved has been a huge wake-up call for so many in Minneapolis to see what many already knew, which is that our police department is not keeping every member of our community safe. And so I think step one for us is to tell the truth. Nine council members from communities all across the city of all different backgrounds standing together to tell the truth and say, this system isn't working for too many of our neighbors for too long. 
our reform efforts have failed and we have done many, many attempts at reform and new leadership in the department and many things. Uh, and we still see um, this tragic death. And so I think the wake up of our community is what's driving the city council's announcement yesterday. And now the hard work begins for us to rebuild systems that really work to keep all of our community safe. But to be clear, you're not talking about reform. The word dismantle is intentionally different than reform. This is more than reform. This is dismantling. I mean, activists who support this are calling this a police-free future. Yeah, and you know, a lot of us were asked if we could imagine a future without police back in 2017 when we, when we were running for office. And I answered yes to that question. To me, that, that future is a long way away, and it would take an enormous amount of investment in things that we know work to keep people safe. I mean, for a lot of folks in our community, stable housing is a safety issue. Having access to health care is a safety issue. And so having, you know, I think one thing folks are asking is well, to stop again. investing well, so yeah. much money in this militarized police force and instead invest in the things that our community really needs. So, you know, I know the statement was bold, and I, I stand by that bold statement, but the work ahead of us will be long. It will include every member of our community. It has to. And, you know, I think we have very immediate things. We have a state action against our police department, which gives us legal mechanisms in the very short term. You know, there's lessons from all over the country, all over the world that we're looking to, yeah. um, to take immediate steps while we work toward building the systems that we would need to imagine that, that future. Do you understand that the word dismantle or police free also makes some people nervous? For instance, what if in the middle of the night my home is broken into? Who do I call? Yes, I mean, I, I hear that loud and clear from a lot of my neighbors. And I know, and, and myself too, and I know that that comes from a place of privilege because for those of us for whom the system is working, I think we need to step back and imagine what it would feel like to already live in that reality where calling the police may mean more harm is done. And so in the very immediate, we have to lean into whatever changes we can make in our existing police department. You know, I think we look to cities like Camden, New Jersey that completely restructured their department as we build up systems. And we've already done that. We, have, we are not starting from scratch. We have invested in community-based safety strategies. We have knowledge in our community across the city. We've done an analysis of all the reasons people call 911 and have looked at ways we can shift the response away from armed police officers into a more appropriate response for mental health calls, um, for some domestic violence calls, for um, health-related issues. And so the groundwork is laid already in Minneapolis for us to, to build on that to learn from folks around the world, but really also to listen to our community and put those community voices front and center as we build up those systems even further. On a political point, as a Democrat, are you worried that you have just handed President Trump a great talking point or slogan or battle cry for his reelection to be able to say, see, Democrats want to get rid of your police. First they come to take away your guns, as he says. Now they're taking away your police officers. Does that concern you? You know, that's why I said at the beginning that it starts with telling the truth. And I think we've been afraid of a lot of things, of that, those political dynamics, of what would happen in our city, you know, to have our police force hearing these kinds of words. And that fear is what we have to really work through. Because again, that's the fear that so many in our community are facing. That's the fear that we see, you know, from George Floyd's family or the family of Jamar Clark or Justine Damon, who are also killed by Minneapolis police, who have told us we never want to see this happen again. And so those efforts that we have taken so far to stop this, to make sure no one is killed in this way, have not worked. So our statement is to try something new. Hello, my name is Jane. I'm social justice race.